Hi everyone, it's Mr. Sinti, and today I'd like to talk to you about epithelial tissue. And so epithelial tissue is one of four types of tissues that make up the human body. There's four. There's epithelial, there's connective tissue, and there's muscle tissue, and there's nervous tissue. All four of those tissues are really critical. They're found throughout the body, and they make up the study of a branch of physiology called histology. And so today's video is a, is a emphasis on epithelial tissue. And so there's several types, and so let's, let's jump right into that discussion. And so one of the things about tissues, and if this is your first time, uh, or your, this is an introduction to tissues, you're going to see that um, it's going to take a little time to become, become comfortable and recognize these tissues, but over time you'll acquire uh, expertise. And so sort of bear with me on this and we'll, we'll ease into it. And so one of the things, one of the characteristics of epithelial tissue is that the cells, if you can see here, let me sort of highlight it here. In this drawing, um, this, these cells right here, this is a single cell, and that purple area is the nucleus of the cell. Do you notice how these cells, and there's many of them, they're all pretty similar. And so this is what we mean by a tissue, first off, which is a group of cells that are similar in appearance and have a similar functionality. These are considered to be epithelial tissue. So the epithelial tissue is this layer right here. Okay? And you're like, well, why is that? Well, I'll get into some of the characteristics in a moment. But what, what I'll say is that it lines the outside of the body, epithelial tissue. So your skin is made up of epithelial tissue but it also lines the inside of the body as well. So inside of the mouth is epithelial tissue, and it lines the outside of all of your organs and the inside of all of your organs. Think of, for example, like a basketball, the outer coating would be epithelial tissue, and then the inside would be epithelial tissue. And if the basketball was thick, there would be other tissues comprising those layers. And so one of the characteristics about epithelial tissue is that the cells are very close together. They're adjacent. Do you see how they're right next to each other? And again, you might think, well, isn't that the case for every tissue? And that isn't. Like below this, this happens to be connective tissue right here. And I can't see it, but I'll just draw it in. Here's the cell membrane. There's the nucleus. Here's the cell membrane. And do you see these, these lines right here? There's a lot of space in between the cells. And so there's often protein. The space is called the matrix. And so uh, a characteristic of epithelial tissue is that there's not a lot of matrix between the cells. And then this term over here, simple, refers to the fact that there's one cell layer. Sometimes there's more than one cell layer. But if there's one cell layer, it's simple. If there's many, like in layers, it's, co it's considered to be stratified. And then this is also called columnar. This is in reference to the fact that the cell shape is that of a column or a beam like this. Not all epithelial tissue are columnar in appearance. Okay, so that's a lot to take in for the first <laughs> beginning, but it's fine. What's some of the characteristic functions of epithelial tissue? Well, one of the characteristic functions of epithelial tissue is that it can form a very strong protective layer. And so what I mean by that protection is, do you notice how these cells, this is the epithelial tissue. And I know that because this area out here is what we call free space. Epithelial tissue is always in contact with the free space. It doesn't have to be on the outside of the body. It could be like the oral cavity or the nasal cavity, or it could be in contact with the inside of the stomach. And so the free space of the stomach would be like where the food is occupying. And so that's a characteristic. Your very first layer is often epithelial tissue. So this epithelial tissue, notice how there's many cells here. And so this is what we mean by layers are stratified, like the strata of the earth, the layers of the earth. This is quite protective. And so this provides an impenetrable barrier for things that maybe we don't want. Like maybe there's germs, for example, there's bacteria all on, our, on the surface of our skin and we don't want them to penetrate. So it, it plays a protective role. Also, epithelial tissue is very good with secretion. So these cells can secrete things 
and they can also absorb things. And we'll get into examples of secretion and, and absorption and protection as we move through. But those are the three major functions of epithelial tissue. And it's perfect because that's what you, when you're on the surface, you're secreting, you're absorbing, and you're protecting. It kind of makes logical sense if you think about it. And so here's some, uh, an actual micrograph. This is what we call a photo of something seen under the light microscope, a micrograph. And so what you're looking at here, and let me see if I can let me go to highlighter here. So each of these cells, unfortunately, uh, each of these cells right here is an epithelial cell. And notice how there's a single cell layer, so we call it simple. And here's the nucleus in the circle right here. And you're like, well, where's the free space? The free space is located right here and located right here. This tissue is not epithelial. So let me highlight this. This is the epithelial tissue, the epithelial tissue right here and right here. This is the free space. And so what? since it's a single cell layer, these cells are not very good at protection, but what they're really good at is secretion. And you're like, well, what are they secreting? Well, if this was inside the digestive system, you might realize one of the basic functions of the digestive system is to break down food from something that's really large to something that's a little smaller and a little smaller and a little smaller and a little smaller. And when it's tiny, it's then small enough to be absorbed through diffusion into a cell. And so absorption is a function of epithelial tissue. And, and you're like, well, what's, what's the secretion all about? In order to speed up the breakdown of food, oftentimes, and we'll get into this a little bit later, uh, oftentimes what's being secreted are enzymes, which are specialized proteins that catalyze or speed up chemical reactions in order to break down the food. So the cells are secreting digestive enzymes, the food is being broken down and then absorbing. And so do you notice how the cells are very close together? Right here. So here's a close-up of one single cell. So this cell right here is, let's say, that one right there. Do you notice the cell membrane right here? Of course, the magnification isn't as, as high that we can see this, but the cell, the cell membrane in contact with the free space actually is convoluted. In other words, it's sort of around and around and around, which increases the surface area of the cell membrane. And so what we call this is brush border, like brush as if you're like combing your hair because there's all these bristles. This increases the surface area, which gives the cell a, an even better opportunity to secrete, an even better opportunity to absorb because there's more surface area to do those things. The reason the cells are so close together is that they're like riveted together, not with screws or metal, but with proteins that, that are shared between the cell membranes of adjacent cells, and these are called tight junctions. So it prevents fluids from passing in between the cells. So that's, that's kind of a cool thing. So epithelial tissue is close together. Now, take a look at this epithelial tissue. And so I'm aware of the fact that it's new to you, but all of this is epithelial tissue. How do you know that? Well, it's in contact with the free space, which is right here. Also, the cells are very close together, and you can kind of tell that there's many of them, and so it looks like this is stratified in nature. And so one of the main functions of this epithelial tissue is that of protection. It's a barrier, and, and, it, and it's against mechanical injury and microorganisms and fluid loss. You really don't want to be leaking out a lot of fluid. Likewise, you don't want... Uh, unknown fluids coming in. Can you imagine if you were in a swimming pool and all that water were, were able to diffuse through osmosis into your body? That would be detrimental. <laughs> and so you, the skin is, in a, is a barrier to that. It's all, and you know, say for example, it's not completely impenetrable. But say if you had a, a really big abrasion, you had some really major trauma, you know what, where this is going. Like if you actually penetrated the epithelial tissue, you get down into this lower tissue layer down here. This happens to be called the dermis, but it's, it's uh, loose connective tissue. There's blood vessels down here. And if you got a cut, this dermis is sometimes called the cutaneous layer. And therefore, blood would be leaking out. You're like, I have a cut. But then sometimes you may realize that, you ever have this where you're going along and you're like, oh, a sliver 
is in my skin. Like, this is weird, I'm not even bleeding. And then you can take, like, a needle, and you could actually sort of harvest it. You can, like, go in here, pull the sliver out, and, and matter of fact, when you stick the, the pin into your skin, you're like, gee, it doesn't even hurt. This is weird. There's no nerves. There's no neurons up here in this epithelial tissue in this particular slide. And also, what's interesting is uh, you could just remove this and <laughs> there's no pain whatsoever and there's no bleeding whatsoever. And so these cells are, uh, are dead, actually. These cells up here are dead and they get sloughed off as time goes by. And so it makes a really good barrier. And so another characteristic of epithelial tissue, and you're like, where is it? I don't see the epithelial tissue. Let me highlight it a little bit more. So this cell, here's a cell, there's a cell like this. And so you're like, why is it in a circle like this? Well, this is a tube. So there's many like tubes in the body. And as it turns out, this is a cross section. So you're cutting it and you're looking right at it. And so this is simple because there's one cell layer. Here's the nucleus in red. And do you see this tissue in blue below it is not epithelial tissue. This is epithelial tissue because it's in contact with the free space, which is located here. So as it turns out, this tissue is really good at secretion and absorption. Now, what is this black layer that surrounds this, that separates? It's sort of the border between epithelial and what's below it. It's called the basement membrane, and that kind of makes logical sense because it's at the bottom of the tissue. And it's a layer of protein that helps anchor the, the tissue with the tissue below. Okay, And this is a great shot of the basement membrane right over here, but this is better still a shot of epithelial tissue. And I know this is the only tissue that you may know if you're watching this video first, but this is epithelial tissue. How do we know it? The cells are close together. It's in contact with the free space. The, and here, here are the nuclei. And so I wanted to point out, you're like, well, um, what's that right there? This is a quick, kind of a weird looking cell. This cell right here happens to be called a goblet cell. And if I were to like draw in and be silly, I can draw in sort of a wine goblet or a water goblet. What's inside this cell is mucus. And so this is a cell that specializes in secreting mucus into the free space. And that's helpful because sometimes you want water and mucus to flow in the free space. If you're in the digestive system, that's rather critical. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into a discussion. This is part one of a video on epithelial tissue. And in the, the, the subsequent parts of, of uh, this discussion, what I'm going to do is walk you through the different types of epithelial tissue. Actually, there's more than one. And so I'll just give you a little preview. I mentioned the, these two terms before, which are important. If the tissue is simple, there's a single cell layer. Whoops. If, it, if, it's, if it's simple, there's a single cell layer, like, for example, this one and this one. If there's many cell layers, it's considered to be stratified, which is, which is what this is and what is what this is. And so you can characterize tissue based on single or many layers. What's fascinating is that we're going to see that there's a tissue. This is one I don't want to play favorites, but this one's kind of a cool one. This one on quick glance, you're like, hmm, this one looks a little stratified because the nuclei are kind of all over the place. And it looks like there's more than one cell layer. But in fact, there's only one cell layer. And so it's actually called pseudo-stratified, meaning not stratified. <laughs> so in other words, it's simple. And so what's fascinating there is... Do you notice this tissue has like little hairs coming up? You might recall this somewhere in your in your biological past, but sometimes cells have, I'll, I'll draw that, they have uh, a protein that exhibits from the outside of the cell membrane that are called cilia, and the cilia help to move objects uh, around, and so this is called pseudostratified ciliated columnar. How's that? <laughs> okay, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, introduction to epithelial tissue. Thanks for watching.